always having that in my own time to do. I would add my, I mean, my master of faith is on the level of that. Then my PhD on all of the philosophers. And then they should be common. So basically, when you are a bad boy, you will get common on Christmas. I got common from when you stay on common for a while. And go to the structure and then move. Move is not common. And also, automatically, by other people. Is out of proportion. Especially, I'm trying to give you a glance not only, or not mainly of our contribution, but of the field, just to, see, to present to young people a new field. I mean, because I'm sure I'm not a chemist. Uh, whenever I heard talking of catalyst in the student time, did this also. So it's not for me. And I was happy working on band structures. Electron transport and so on. And if you are working on DSSC, you know get the, the material is actually uh, more or less a principle system. But if you are looking working on solid cells, maybe you never fall into catalysis before. <laughs> so I decided being really out of the mainstream of this conference to uh, give some kind of tutorial and point out things and give you a number of reviews that you can uh, read if you like to start thinking about applying to your field or moving your field or considering other things about economics. Okay, this is production. I will be then quite in detail from the beginning about catalysis, add the photocatalysis, and then try to look also real world because, okay, science is nice, research is nice, but uh, the driving force is application. You really are uh, getting rewards in terms also of satisfaction and not meaning of money. But uh, if you are something you have been able to produce, to invent something that really go in the world and make a difference. Okay, very simply then your reaction is something you know. Uh, what is important here is that you actually have some kind of barrier and the reaction rate depends on the height of the barrier and on the temperature. So you can speed up uh, what is going on in terms of okay, the reaction by increasing the temperature. Uh, catalysts are actually helping you to get the same reaction in milder conditions. Uh, milder normally means lower temperature, but maybe a little uh, more tricky than that. Uh, so the catalyst is doing the job through its surface. This means that you have to get the molecules they want to react in contact with the surface. And in the end, uh, what happens is that the reaction rate depends on the surface coverage, as you might expect, because then you need to get the surface in order to have the reaction. And this is what actually happens, is that the activation network is stretched, because things are much more complicated. But essentially, there is a lowering of the activation energy, which is due to the fact that the catalyst is there. And so you speed up without increasing the that essentially the But when you look at things, of course, the surface coverage is the key point. You need to have uh, a reaction. In order to have a reaction, you need to your product molecules to reach. Sorry, your reactant molecules to reach the surface. And at the absorb, so you have a barrier for absorption. And here you have an additional effect, which is covering the temperature. Uh, why I didn't point out this? Because now we have two effects covering the temperature. One is mainly the activation barrier lowering, the other one is the absorption. But when you go to photocatalysis, uh, you are completely skipping the effect of uh, temperature, involving temperature, because photocatalysis is not is doing the job photons, but you still have some kind of effect of temperature because absorption of molecules depends on temperature. So you might be quite careful before saying that photocatalysis does not depend on temperature. It's much weak, more weakly dependent on temperature than other types of catalysis, but it still is. And we will be focusing on what is known as heterogeneous catalysis. The surface has to be in the case because it is kind of thing 
we are as an application, this is the kind of application I'm considering. Okay, well, this is the cascade that you have to go through in order to have a catalytic process. Uh, the cascade is the same for both catalysis and photocatalysis, apart from uh, this part that is actually where photons in enter into the reactor. So the first thing is that you have to get your reactants to the surface, be adsorbed, and then there's a reaction that might be reaction due to the surface itself, the material itself, or due to the fact that photons are coming. If photons are coming, things are a little more uh, complicated. You have to absorb a photon, create a carrier pair, pair migrate okay, the pair to the surface, and then have a, a reaction with the reactants. And but this is not the story, because when you have you reach the products. The products are on the surface. They stay on the surface. They deactivate the site because there is no way for another process molecule to do that, reactant molecule to go there. So you, have, you need to be able to release the reactant from the surface, otherwise you will not uh, process. And if you go very basic trivia, I call trivia because it is very uh, easy thing. There are a number of things that are so trivial, but they are critical because they can help you understand what you have to do in order to improve things. One is that you must have some active absorption site where you can bind your reactor molecule. Then you have a photon that must reach material and therefore. It will produce carriers, but these carriers should reach the surface, and there should be some reactor molecules there, as I said before. And then you should be able to get rid of the products from the surface, otherwise everything is stopped. And this helps you understanding what are the key parameters of this process. The reaction rate is proportional to the number of active sites. So the number of active sites, once you have surface, is a static number. Uh, even if you increase photons more and more and more, you will not get any additional effect once you have saturated all absorption sites. That's why, in the end, if you have a given photon flux, uh, you, there is no sense to increase the mass of your photo catalyst beyond a certain value, because otherwise you have not enough photons to activate everything. So you have to be very careful in making the layout of your system, balancing things without and wasting your photocatalyst. Well, reactance concentration, of course, uh, you know that the reaction rate depends on the surface coverage and depends on the concentration in the solution. So again, you have this kind of effect. You can saturate, once you have saturated, you can do anything more. You cannot do additional molecules. So there is saturation value for concentration, depending, of course, the scale of this depends on how much is the mass of your photocatalytic material. The role of temperature, as I said before, actually, uh, the first thing people say is there is no effect of temperature. It's not true. There are even much more complicated than normal That is because you have a few things that depend on temperature. If you are going down to very low temperature, what you see that there is nice absorption. Maybe, but then the reaction rate will not be able to grow up because the product will not be. And so this is the kind of things happening here. When you have high temperature, you have desorption. So your bodies are coming and going again, and you are dropping. So there is a region, which depends on the photo as you are using, but is normally in this range, where you have optimum temperature for getting the best of your system. Uh, you have a problem. Yeah. Maybe the temperature is too, yeah. too low, I cannot change the vibe. Go for it. OK. OK. And then the, the absorption rate of photon is obviously if my absorption coefficient does not allow me to absorb a photon with a given energy or frequency, uh, there is no way that I can do it in the process. And you can see here 
uh, for the Dirac gap material that it clearly maps the shape. There is a threshold, and below the threshold, in terms of wavelength, or above the energy, then you start having a photovoltaic. Then there are additional issues that I'm not going to in detail because the absorption map. Very, it's clear that you need a lot of photons as close as possible to the surface because then it's the surface. You don't need uh, carriers in the bottom. You need carriers in the surface. So if you have a bit more lower wavelength, then the gate wavelength is better. So again, there are a number of additional small things that I'm going to detail now because it's a very over overview. The photon flux. It has quite a tricky behavior. A very low photon flux is, is linear in the reaction rate, and it makes sense. You are producing more and more uh, carriers. But then, when you start increasing too much the carrier density, one carrier that is generated in one place and going to the surface means a lot of other carriers of different uh, size, and you start recombinating. And so, the, you get in the end something which is square root of the and this is something you can take into account in order to maximize the efficiency of the systems. Finally, you will be very happy to be able to compare materials. Because one thing is that my material is better than yours, so one thing is to quantify. If you want to quantify, you need to have numbers, a procedure, and so on. Uh, things are not so clear, actually. But again, what you normally do is you try to understand how much interaction rate depends on flux. You have seen that risk management is there. And so you get a number of can always you need to work out which are the key points for the reaction rate. Let's say that we are more interested now to see that reaction rate uh, can go up to 60, 80, minus this is not an issue the process. It's simple reaction rate. So uh, how many uh, how much you can uh, produce in terms of molecules that have been converted in terms of around salt. Uh, this is, you must understand how I explain myself very well. But otherwise, one thing, okay, the photographic system has 90% efficiency. No, this is the efficiency of a single photon per single molecule. Then a lot, number of other things come into play, and you will over, and even go much, a lot, depending on how you engineer the system. Well, what is next? Next is what you do with your carriers that has gone to the surface. You are trying normally to oxidize things. At least most of you use a photocatalyst that do oxidation. There is dye, uh, dye decoloration or water splitting. Water splitting goes to reduction. But mainly, uh, this is what happens. So essentially, you, when you go up, you are trying to get your system interacting with reactants in order to go to the products. And in the most of the case, you are looking for producing in solution, this water solution, OH, that can help uh, speeding up uh, the chemical reaction you are looking at. OK, then you have the oxidation potential, which are quite interesting. But I think you people that work in the SSC know very well the kind of problem that arise from this, because you have levels. When you are trying to be in contact to, to send the electron or a ball from one material to the other, then you have to look at energy levels and barriers in between. And at the energy level, you have a reference from the point of your reactions that is actually the reference is given by the potential, which is the normal, normal, known as the normal hydrogen potential. Which and the electrode is actually given at the zero, and, but you have to remember that this zero is not that when you have two different fields and try to put things together. Each one is on scale, and sometimes it's difficult to put things together. Actually, the zero of the of this scale, that is, the, when you have these kind of electrodes and you are trying to understand where is the voltage, that makes your electron working is actually not the zero <coughs> of parking level. It's 4.5 in the middle of parking level, more or less, depends on pH. 
And this you need to know in order to compare the land structure. So that you can see the land structure of the land gap is relevant, but it's not only the land gap, it's also the land position that is very critical. With respect to exactly this level. In fact, the band structure is what you need. Uh, you have to move your carriers to the surface and then to transfer. So you need levels in the right po position. If you want to move electrons, you need to go, to, to go down in energy. If you want to move, you have to go up in energy. So you have to have the levels on one side and the other correctly placed. Then you have additional things that can play a bit of a role on the surface. Then maybe you, you are talking to what's going on on the surface. On the surface. And it's something you always have to remember. I will come back to this later. Uh, the optimum band structure. OK, normally this is the acceptor level for water, and this is the donor level for water. So you see that this is a zero voltage, and this is the other effect of water splitting. Your bands should be like this. Not only the gap should be larger than 1.23, but also the band, conduction band, should be closer to the vacuum level, while the vacuum band should be far from the vacuum level compared to the solution levels that you are trying to function electric too. And you have here a sketch of what are the existing materials. So this is the zero level. You see that our materials that have a good 2.8. You say, okay, my gap is 2.8, I need 1.23, that's okay. No, it's not okay because the conduction band here is lower. So you cannot transfer outside the electric. While all the others that in this gap encompass both, they can do either oxidation or reaction or both of them at the same time with how you are playing or what you are trying to do. As I said before, you have this kind of, uh, you are attempting to move from the bulk of the solid to the liquid, and you have a surface. Uh, this interface is going to be, to be uh, detrimental for the barrier, because you are going to move to change the barrier structure, the length structure, actually detrimental, depends. It can help, this helps the electron to move out, but it's a blocking from the hole and the other way around. So if you engineer the band surface, you can either help or uh, make a bad job for your conversion. Now let's go to the material you know. This is, I would say, as I said before, the thing is the king of the electric machine. It's not only one, but it is the most common use, as you see, in the white world. Everything. You think, I might try photometallics from this system. OK, let's take 25 and see if it works or not. Uh, what is titanium? I think you know, but what is interesting is that what we are talking about is something that is quite well known from all times. It's not something new. In 1938, they started trying to bleach in the dyes with this process. And in 72, they reported what of three. Quite old. It has been around for a while, but now there is a push or a number of reasons. And among the different phases of titanium, there are four, but these two are the more relevant. Uh, Anatas is better, uh, because you see, this is the configuration. Both are OK, because they're again, it encompasses the level for reduction of oxidation of water. Uh, but uh, Anata is a spectrum. So essentially, if you can, you go and Okay, and that is actually uh, something the structure is there. But again, uh, this structure might be misleading because what is going on is going on the surface. This is the bus. So you have to be very careful when you say this structure is there. Uh, you have to look at the surface and see which is the surface structure of this crystal to say, okay, that's better or not. Okay, this is not something you might be aware of. This is some kind of effect, a photographic effect you may like. This is the reduction of on the table. Essentially, the drop is splashed completely. And so that a number of drops become material. I think this is doing no harm at all. 
so it becomes stronger. So the water is still there, but it's on a thin film of uniform thickness, so no problem for, from optical point of view. And here is self-cleaning using the UV of UV light of salt, and maybe if it was rain. But as you, I told you, Tayo, Cagnetia is quite known. It's sold in, not in rats, as you see, this kind of shipping system. Huh? You're shipping in kilos, in tons, huh? or a number of different uses. And what is called the use of P25 is something like a standard, even in modern energy. So people normally use this to compare things. Then you might go to other types of titanium or use thin films, but this is a standard uh, to compare with. This is the characteristic, but the important thing that I was interested in before is that one. If you have a perfect, perfect surface, there is no effect. Uh, so it's critical is the, what is wrong on the surface. So the surface thickness. Essentially, it appears to be that oxygen vacancies or dye vacancies are the key point to, for the good activity, for the better activity of the The point is, uh, if you get to the surface with your carriers, the surface is perfect. There is no absorption side, there is no way to interact with the solution. Here is where the solution can be absorbed. So essentially, you need a perfect bar and a very definite surface. If you can agree on this, you are your best ability. Which is not the case for electronic The Surface defects will retract. In this case, you are looking for surface defects to engineer them properly without getting defects in the bottom. Okay, just a few examples where titania has been used up to now. Just a sample. And in dyes, degradation of dye means well, there are two effects. One is discoloration to get rid of color. And one is the generation you get to create a molecule by tracking them and hopefully getting them to a more less harmful chemical configuration. And water splitting is something that has been around for a while, but has been near a while or less than it. Uh, the idea is simple. I mean, uh, hydrogen is one of the fuel, okay, it's not a fuel, it's something that can store energy and give you energy. Not really a right. Again, it helps you at least to move energy from one place to the other from day to night in a very safe way. You stop things and move things and you're pouring energy. Uh, so, idea is simple. Uh, where hydrogen is in water, so if you are able to spring water, we are out of hydrogen. Uh, nowadays, things are not so it's not energy efficient. What you get in terms of energy back from hydrogen is less from what you need to pay for splitting hydrogen. But if the source is there and free, like this sun, you might not be caring too much about this. So that's why uh, photocatalytic is considered with solar light or water splitting. And this can also be seen some kind of time transfer. You have sun in the day, and you need energy in the night. You put it back, and then you have fuel cell, and you use your solar energy whenever you want. Of course, there are many other rules. Right? Have solar cell, and you get a battery, and so on. It is one of the many possibilities. Many possibilities. I'm not claiming this is the best one. I think it's not. When we can we come to that efficiency, we see that nowadays efficiency of the system are actually something that don't work the same as you buy one. Again, for water splitting, you need both reactions at the same time. So you are looking for a structure that can have both oxidation and reduction levels of water in between them. And there are a number of Titania is OK. Titania has an impact on this point of view because it's UV. It absorbs UV. Why do we know that in the solar spectrum, UV is not really a big matter? It's perfectly able to absorb other wavelengths as well. And what is the point? You see that you can 
you need then to shrink the gap. But it's not enough. You should shrink the gap, but keep still uh, medical medical men outside this man between the two levels of dissociation. And still you have a number of possibilities. Well, okay, cadmium selenide and others. And titania. Titania is there as well. Uh, but titania is a problem of UV absorption problem. Uh, one other key point is, okay, we are talking about uh, all mechanism, what is going on, my material titanic, but how you test efficiency and compare with other people. I mean, the world today, uh, all days of all our sets, it was quite uh, difficult to compare from one lab to the other because there was no standard. Uh, each one was using the best light for itself, someone was using AM1.5 or AM7.9 because it was the best efficiency for that system. And then the standard came, because then they make sense in the topic. In this condition, mine is better than yours. Here we are still on a bit of not really assessed, because what you really want is clear. But, you know, the reaction rate, reaction rate, chemically speaking, is just what happens on the surface. It's not the total reaction that involves also moving things, the desorption and so on. So, normally what happens is that most of the time, there is a bottleneck that is not reactive. And if you are measuring the total, you might be wrong in assuming that your reaction rate is worse than that. You are simply not getting rid of all the reactions. So this is one key point. People sometimes are mixing reaction rate with the overall reaction efficiency, which is, of course, a risk, but not that. And also, normally what happens is that uh, you have to be careful with the pH value. It's like you take M1 or M2 for the solar at the beginning. You play with your pH because your system works better for pH 3, your mind is better for pH 7, and so you yeah, normally you don't care, say really, oh, mine is good only for that. Mine is really good, and you know, pH is 7, or pH is 3. This is something we need to be more careful about. Uh, from the point of view of the efficiency is when you are looking to dice, you want to get rid of the chemical structure, not only the core. To get rid of the core sometimes is enough to break the ball, transfer the charge from one part to the other dye. While if you want to get rid of the harmfulness of the chemical, you need to break up. And so the test is what is done normally is what they call total organic carbon. You are going to measure what is left in terms of organic carbon after the reaction. Because the inorganic carbon, mineralized carbon, is not harmful. And it goes with metals and the activity. And so this is what normally is required. Because sometimes the dyes can be inactivated by other ways of the process that have nothing to do with the fact that they have split up the molecules and get rid of it. Okay, that's kind of efficiency you can get in this time of illumination. This is the Gusta P25. This is just to sh show that normally you can have a discoloration effect, but you have to be sure that it matches the total organic carbon. So you should first get your dye, get your system, and compare the two. Say, okay, in my system, dye discoloration gives the same information as your system. It's much easier. And then you can proceed in your. In your something you have to be careful about. Okay, this is a big. Now, uh, things that have been improving from 1938, not so much, but really. And which are the headlines of innovation in this field by now? Okay, one is to get a better use of sunlight. And this one thing is dye sensitization that works already in photocatalysis, but I'm not going to speak. It's your way on solar cells. You don't need to be told about yes, how it works. Then you can try to lower the gap band gap, do something like this called doping. I'm not really uh, convinced that you can dope. Okay. They put elements inside, but then these elements are doing doping, but I'm not really sure. They let all the surface. So they more want to surface levels more than we are doping. But again, this term is a matter of terms. One other thing is you want to reduce charge recombination because you want to get 
most of your charge on the surface. And there are ways to do it. Increase the surface per gram. You go down to the nanoparticles. You set it out of <coughs> by day or whatever it is, you get more surface. And but it's not only that. There is a if I am not I will tell you this part. Uh, there is tail of the particle shape, which is quite uh, funny in some sense. And then one other thing is, okay, from the process, it's not a problem, but we are going to react and then to the power. In the flow. Uh, probably the power can follow the flow. I don't want titania in the water. I want titania to remain inside the react. So I have to engineer some way to do it. One way is simply do not do it. Power, use some thin field or other things which may have already been mobilized in some part of the field. So, this is one field of research also. Nanoparticles. I have, you know, if you look at nanoparticles, okay. nanoparticles they are spherical. I mean, they are not spherical, but apart from nanoparticles, most of the people are thinking of nanoparticles spherical. In some, most of the time it's okay. But if you are looking to increase the surface, the spherical is worse. I mean, from the human name, it's known that you want to reduce the surface for a human body, you get a spherical. So spherical is the less efficient shape that you get around. And in fact, that's why people are trying to look at nano rolls or other things. And this is what happens. This is spherical nanoparticles, and these are differently shaped like in these nano rolls and so on, and you see that you increase the actual rate with the same amount because you are being increased the surface. And there is additional effect. They are dreamers, so they have less recombination. Travel of cardiac things and malaria is for a shorter distance, so you can increase, increase the combination. If you go down to the surface in detail, what the surface bang bang thing on structure is clean, you know, as I said before. But uh, it depends on a lot of different things. One is the wall termination, okay? You get uh, localized surface states. The second is that you have a solution. You are not in that. You have a solution in contact. A solution which might contain some surely OH, and minus H plus, and other things. Okay. Well, then you have a number of things, so you can engineer the surface in order to exploit the effect. I'm not going to go into detail because I think that's only that I'm going off of my time. Uh, immobilization is one issue. One alternative way is using photomagnetic photostatic because in this case with a small magnet you just stop. The flow you see this is simply powder, powder form, you put a magnet and you stop your photostatic is moving outside the system. Then you have plasmonic photocatalysis and so on. Uh, you try to improve the use of solar light by a different way. You change other photocatalysis. I again is not the only one. Uh, and again, I'm now going for a while, two minutes if you want, uh, about what we are doing in the office. We are opening in the side for a number of reasons. Uh, one thing is Morphology control show you that this, uh, the red is a crystalline size in our shapes, and the, sorry, the red is a reaction rate, and the crystalline size is a green. You see there is clear correlation, and the shape is doing the job also. Well, you can draw thin film on the surface. Actually, this can be drawn on any surface that is than 600 degrees. Metal, whatever you want, it's no problem. Uh, you can go also on steel mesh. Interesting because then you can have a glow reactor and you can put as many matches as you want. You can grow inside silica filters uh, so that you have a filter which is used for filtering water. You grow inside and you see that it works well. It works well, even better in visible than UV because the filter is absorbing UV, not absorbing so much visible. Other visible oxide, and this is quite interesting part. In visible oxide, Actually, there are different phases. The delta phase is a phase which is stable in crystalline form at over 600 degrees. It's a stable phase. And there's a gap of 1.4, which is quite interesting. Uh, colleagues in Mexico City, with whom we are collaborating, have been able 
to grow it by mining battery in a stable form and lose water. And this means that this is absorption coefficient of this material. This is a white light, so it encompasses perfectly the spectrum of spectrum. And in fact, if you compare the results of this coloration, in this case, by the you see. You see that this is the thin film of titanium, this is the nanoparticles of titanium. So from thin film to nanoparticle, it was again. And this is the thin film of bismuth oxide. So we are getting better results because you spoil much better in light. And still, this is not nanoparticle. So we are expecting to be able to draw nanoparticles that this can become human. Sure. Of course. Andromeda. Actually, it is very sensitive to pH. You have to go to low pH values in order to have uh, this result. Okay, uh, I have 20 minutes. Oh, no? 10? Oh, I think one or two. Uh, now, this is the basic and the headlines for new uh, research. But now, the, the title they suggested me, if you want to tell a little bit about this, it is also about the system. So let's have an idea of what system means. We are going to the from the investigation of mechanism to something that can be tested in that system and then transferred to the field. And things are a little bit more different because you have different benchmarks that are critical for you, not only the best question uh, related to what you're looking for. You would like to avoid UV lights because UV lights are costly. You can use solar light in the cheap, it's free. Then you would like to pray to play it with your material. Uh, how you illuminate? Okay, if you sun, the transmission of point is critical. You the cost. The cost is if you want to put UV light inside, you need cost. If you are going to this moment, you ask the night. It's a new difference in cost for the same system. So the pushing for uh, lower gap is not only due to the fact that you are exploiting more light, but the second effect is that you can use plus reactor instead of more reactor. And it's a big difference in cost. Okay, these are things that you have to consider when you are going to grow in the lab the system. These are lab systems with different uh, kind of approaches. Uh, this is uh, multiple paths. These are lamps, UV lamps, mm -hmm. and your, uh, your solution is going this way. Uh, others are a coaxial reactor. You put the flow flowing here, and you have in the center your UV light. Of course, this is testing. For testing, you have to have a control of light. So you can use solar lamps to say, but if you want to make a quantitative analysis, it's much better to have a control source. Then you can make your calculation, fill the source, and see what happens and so on. Uh, for instance, people are using UV lamp. Uh, then you have an issue about, are you going to uh, have an online testing of the efficiency or, or an offline? Clearly, offline is easier, but online has to understand these things much more. So, uh, people have, uh, some people have used uh, offline system, other people have used online system. If you go then to outside, you say, oh, that's okay, in my lab, I understood what is going on. Now, I'm trying to build some real system, pilot system that can be scaled uh, for application. Then again, you have a number of additional things because you know that you heard yesterday a couple of talks from company people. Uh, and the logic is not the logic of best efficiency. So, I mean, okay. Uh, the best efficiency that gives me the best trade off in terms of cost, money, economy, uh, environment, and so on. So, it's much more uh, complicated. So, you have to look. Of course, the basic, I would like to use sunlight because it's energy efficient, it's point zero. I need long-term stability. I cannot say, okay, for five minutes it's perfect, then it degrades. 
at least two years, because they paid for no more than five ten percent in performances in five ten years. You would like to avoid or reduce maintenance costs, reconditioning means that your systems are getting down efficient in order to want to give you back is bad. Then you have to get for overall energy balance, life cycle assessment, a number of things that are the real world of application for industry and not simply by competition in labs, which is criticized. It's okay, but then when you do the real world, other things come into play. I'm not talking about economic cycles, which then we say, okay, now there is a space because you can get money or not, which is another thing, but cost effectiveness. Well, what is going in the real world? Because you know that uh, there's like sensors. Uh, people is testing sensors for one specific contaminant without any limits. When you are in the real world, you have a lot of different things. And so you should be able to do the job you want without being uh, affected by whatever else you can have. I mean, if you are trying to integrate the new blue, you are not only the best in the world. You have to have, but if you are in the real world, you want to have bacteria, uh, other problems, and so on. You should be sure that they are not harming your process. So you have to make real tests. And that's what I said before. It's critical if you are able to use the non UV part of the source spectrum because you have a lot of money uh, in glass. These are some. Photocatalytic pilot system around in France, around, I think this is in Japan, and then at this position, not true. There are some market systems uh, in Spain, in France, uh, and this is for water. And there is an enterprise in Taiwan that is, if you're looking for the washing machine that do not use uh, hot water or any additional living uh, powder, they are produced, I don't know if it exists, if sold, I don't know, never try it, but I know it's on the market. So there are already uh, photocatalysis coming to the market, at least for some specific treatment, maybe in water treatment. I'm not talking about water treatment, I think we are very far from the use of photocatalysis and water treatment right now. Uh, there is a trend towards this direction. And then one other idea is, okay, photocatalysis is nice, but why do not put together with other uh, things that can help in the same direction? So you can mix uh, and couple photocatalytic effects with other uh, in the cell, and you see you can improve uh, the efficiency. This is called the time for color removal, so this is a bad one. The best one is this one, where you see uh, different approaches to get yeah. using a serious approach. Then you can use biological and for wetland. There are works around that try to put together and spoil the, the positive and try to take over the negatives by using another uh, additional form. Here you have a, a few reviews that can help you if you are interested in starting here. But only a few because there are at least at two other pages that can help you. One thing, and I finish off, hopefully it's okay for the time, is a bit of numbers. Uh, as an old solar cell man, I know that numbers are critical. Like, okay, everything is nice, the mechanism is understood, it can be like what I am talking about. I'm talking about water splitting is 20% efficiency or 90% or 25%. How much I can think is reaction rate is kilograms per second or whatever. So this gives you an idea. Essentially what else is that for the quantum efficiency means the efficient use of single photon ranges in the best case is from 60 to 90%. So to the problem is that we use the system. With the case of what of splitting, this 60 to 90 percent becomes a less than 1 percent. So there is space for engineering, space for improvement, because the process itself is efficient. But nowadays, we are not. If you are looking for this innovation, essentially you are talking about 
putting something like a few grams, a few tenths of grams, a few grams per liter of photosynthesis in the solution and getting out some kind of micromole per minute, depending on the concentration, which is normally in the range of 10 minus 5 mole. These are not just to get an idea. We are not getting kilograms per second or liters per second in the analysis. Still interesting, still in the engineering, there are products of market, so there is interest, there is a road that can be followed, but especially for water printing, we are near the way, beginning of this road, going like that, hopefully, uh, to some of the possibilities of exploiting solar and for light or energy. Okay, thank you for your attention. Oh. Thank you.